Hello to everybody joining us today for our Lead Star Marketplace session focusing on the opportunity afforded, pun intended, by Affordable Care Act sales and cross sales to clients looking for health insurance. My name is Bill DeCourcy. I'm the founder of Lead Star. And after consulting with leaders within our business over the last several months, we made the decision to add ACA leads to our existing marketplace of Medicare and final expense leads. Specifically, you can now order ACA live transfer phone calls in Lead Star Marketplace for a very competitive price point, $60 per transfer. Now, before I talk a little bit more about ACA and introduce our panelists who have prepared some great material for our review today, a couple of housekeeping items. First, audience members' audio and video capabilities have been disabled, and we've saved some time at the end of this session for audience members to have their questions answered. If you have a question, please use the Q&A functionality in Zoom to submit it, and we'll be sure to answer it at the end of the session. In addition, this session is being recorded and will be available shortly on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to review it there or check out any of our other onboarding or sales training content, search for Lead Star Marketplace on YouTube. And before you leave our channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can always be notified when we post new content. ACA enrollments have grown tremendously since this program was first rolled out in 2014, when just over 8 million people signed up for coverage. By 2021, this number had grown to 35 million people. As a result, the uninsured rate in the United States is near a historical low, and projections show that as economic growth slows over the next 24 months, the demand for ACA coverage will grow rapidly. From an agent perspective, ACA is a great business to be in, if you approach it in the right manner. The monthly recurring revenue structure of commissions, coupled with ancillary additions, are very attractive, as are the opportunities to boost your T65 Medicare lead flow as ACA customers age into Medicare. With that, I'll turn to our panelists who have much deeper knowledge of these opportunities and can help you get started with this expansion of your business. First, joining us from Stephen Matthews Marketing is Tessa Wolf, Vice President of Marketing, as well as Amy Matson, also a Vice President of Stephen Matthews. Finally, we're joined by Carol Gervasi and Marion Snyder from Fluent, one of LeadStar's key partners, who both have deep experience with the lead side of the business. Carol, let's start with you. Your company, Fluent, has, as I said, deep experience with supplying ACA leads. How have you seen this market and the opportunities that come with it change over the last few years? So I think um, some of what you spoke about before is what we saw in the last few years. So that relationship with the economic slowdown, the relationship between Medicare and those individuals um, that could relate also to Affordable Care Act leads or calls. So we saw that relationship and we knew that it was a business that we would want to pursue and get more involved in. We have seen more agent growth over the last few years as you know, economics slow down and there's more people who can be, um, you know, can, can actually take the Affordable Care Act. So I think that all of those things combined Fluent wanted to really grow that side of the business, and we have, and we've definitely seen tremendous su success with leads and with calls uh, inside of the lead generation industry. So you've seen the demand for these calls go up quite a bit, especially just in the last few months. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, with OEP, you know, really at its height right now, you know, we began that, you know, um, last month. And it's a, not a seasonal business for us, though there is higher demand in certain times of the year. It's really a year round business for us. Um, so certainly demand is high right now, and very competitive. I appreciate that very much, Carol. Next, let's turn to Tessa and Amy. Team, Stevens Matthews Marketing has embraced the ACA opportunity fully and you've prepared an ACA 101 uh, session to share with us. Do you mind taking us through that? Absolutely, we can get started. So we're going to go through an ACA market introduction to give you a ground floor level of what you're looking at and how the market works. So if you want to go ahead and move forward on the slide, Bill. So ACA is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, known as ACA. It was signed into law on March 23, 2010, and this is commonly referred to in the market as Obamacare. The first coverage plan year was 2014, and we have advanced premium tax credits, or what we call subsidies, 
available in this market. And these are the funds that lower the premium cost of coverage for the people applying for ACA. And in order for anyone to be eligible for these subsidies, their household income and the number of occupants in their household on a single tax return determines what bracket that they fall into. Their income must fall between 100% and 400% of the FPL, which is the federal poverty limit. Uh, this is the current grid. It's a little bit fuzzy, but we have it available. And you don't have to memorize this. You don't need to take a picture of it. It's out there. But the nice thing about this platform and the entire market is the quoting and enrollment platforms are going to tell you how much everyone is eligible for. So you don't have to constantly refer to a chart, so don't let that intimidate you. But this is just to give you an idea of what the income tax brackets look like. If we could go ahead and move forward. Important things to note about the income guidelines for ACA is we are currently under a piece of legislation known as the Inflation Reduction Act that was signed in August of this year. And what this legislation did was expand the, or I'm sorry, extend the expanded subsidies that were issued in 2021 until the end of the plan year for 2025. And what that means is right now people are qualifying for more funds than what we have seen in previous plan years. And if that legislation does not get extended or new legislation is not passed, we will end up reverting back to previous guidelines for plan year 2020 and before. But right now we have another three plan years of these additional funds and it's a great time to get started in this market. Next slide. So to be eligible for the ACA, what we're looking at is the customer must be a resident of a state served by a marketplace, and they must be either a U.S. citizen, a U.S. national, or a non-citizen who is lawfully present in the United States and expected to remain in the United States for the entire time of their coverage. They cannot be incarcerated other than incarceration pending disposition of charges. We have four plan levels available in the ACA market. They're referred to as metal tiers, and they are referred to as bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And we're gonna get into those a little bit more here in a minute. Go ahead and move forward. So in the ACA market, we have plans that are referred to as on exchange ACA. These plans must cover pre-existing conditions. They must allow children under the age of 26 to remain on their parents' plans. And they must cover what is referred to as the 10 essential coverages. Those 10 essential coverages are preventative and wellness visits, maternity and newborn care, mental and behavioral health treatment, services and devices to help people with injuries and disabilities or chronic conditions, lab tests, pediatric care, prescriptions, outpatient care, emergency room services, and hospitalizations. We also have, of course, our enrollment period, which is going on right now, November 1st to December 15th. It was extended to January 15th for 2023. It was extended last year. We regularly see that extension, but it's not a guaranteed extension all the way out to January 15th every year, but you know, it, it has been happening in recent years. Uh, we also have what are called special enrollment periods. You have to have a qualifying event in order for someone to have a special enrollment period. Those are going to be things like moving to a new state, the birth of a child, adoption, marriage, divorce, several things listed through there, but uh, several items that can trigger a qualifying event. And they can then enroll in ACA. They have about 60 days to do so outside of the enrollment period. Those would be your qualifying items. Go ahead and move forward. So our metal tiers that we referred to, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Platinum is going to be the one with the most coverage, therefore the one that's going to cost the most premium. Bronze is going to be the one with lower initial coverage from the carrier. It's going to pay a split of 60% from the insurance carrier, 40% from the customer, and then it's going to move up from there. Silver is 3070, gold is 2080, and platinum is 9010. <clears throat> now, you're going to see all of our carriers offer all four of these options. 
but the majority of the time we're only really seeing sales in the first three bronze, silver, and gold. The carriers typically like to focus on our bronze and our silver plans. If you go ahead and hit the button for me, Bill. This is where people who are qualifying for subsidies and especially those expanded subsidies with those additional funds that we have for the next three plan years, it is possible to see not only a $0 bronze plan, but it is possible right now to see a $0 silver plan. So we are seeing more and more people moving into the silver plan. The carriers tend to really try to make their bronze and silver plans attractive. And because of those expanded subsidies, one more time for me, the silver is where the carriers are really focusing right now and trying to dial in being competitive in their markets that they are after. So silver is really kind of your sweet spot in those plans at this time. People who are purchasing silver plans also have the ability to qualify for what we call cost sharing reductions. And it is entirely possible when a qualifying for cost sharing reductions that they can save hundreds or even thousands of dollars in funds for their coverages if they do use their plans for a lot of care. And if we move forward one more time, you're going to see what that looks like. So cost sharing reductions, again, are only available in the silver plans. And what you're seeing here is the silver plan is that 70-30 split. The carrier pays 70%. The insured is responsible for 30% of those claims. But if you have someone who falls into that federal poverty limit of 100% to 150%, they are actually only going to be responsible for 6% of their claims, and it is possible that the subsidies will cover the rest of it, making between the insurance carrier and those subsidies a 94% coverage. So then you're going to see that again for the 150 to 200, 13% for the customer, 87% and then the 2773 split. Once we hit that 250 FPL, that's when you're going to see it, the standard 3070 split that is built into the silver plan. So, you know, I get the question a lot of how are the carriers competing? If they have the same metal tiers, if they have to cover those same 10 essential benefits, what's going to make them different? Well, of course, premium is going to be one of those items. Then you're going to have the plan design is really where they're going to start being substantially different. Even though they have to cover those 10 essential benefits, there is no policy or guideline that says they all have to be the same. So those carriers are going to have differences in how they are covering those 10 essential benefits. Plan design is very important. Network is going to be another item that is going to be important for these plans. We are not utilizing national PPO networks for major medical plans these days. We are using HMO, regional hospital facility networks to where the plans are and those people live. So it's not something where they can go anywhere that they want to get coverage. They need to stay local. So depending on what carriers have contracts with what facilities and physicians is going to depend on whether or not that policy might work for your customer. And then value adds. This is another big one that's going to be a distinguisher between these carriers. And what those value adds look like are going to be additions like healthy rewards. We have carriers that have apps with healthy rewards where they can go in and complete tasks. And those would include filling out a medical profile, how often do they exercise, how often much water, things like that, in addition to their annual exams. They're going to earn points, and they're going to be able to cash those points in for gift cards or different items. We have fitness memberships built into some of our plans. One of our carriers currently has a no-cost addition of a Peloton membership for all of their policyholders. So there's things like this out there. Virtual healthcare. I know everybody's familiar with Teladoc, but for the ACA market, the virtual healthcare options are expanding. It is not just going to be for quick little virtual visits for ear infections or colds or things like that that we need taken care of quickly that are really very simple. These are going to include additional benefits like mental and behavioral health and additional types of services that generally before required a physical visit to a physician. They are working on expanding this. Some of those carriers have already started to do so. And one more. 
and diabetic care. We have a carrier that is specifically targeting this market. They have a built-in no-cost add-on value add to their policyholders where they are seeing $0 co-pays for their visits for follow-ups for some of these services. They're seeing low to no cost on some of their equipment to help manage the, this condition in addition to other items that people who have diabetes can utilize and try to remain healthier. So they are specifically targeting that market. Our quoting and enrollment platforms. We have two different options for the ACA market. One of them would be probably the one most people are familiar with if they've been in the ACA market at all, and it's going to be the Health Sherpa system. This is free to all of our agents, and it's going to show you all federal exchange states as well as the state of California. This is going to show you every carrier available in any given zip code that you put in on the input. You do also get a customizable pearl. The enrollment can be agent or customer driven, and the application time on Health Sherpa is roughly eight minutes compared to an application process on healthcare.gov's website of roughly about 20 minutes was the last fact that we had. And within Health Sherpa, it is possible for agents to be paid referrals for applications that go through your system on carriers that you are not appointed with. So that's an additional way of earning some extra funds for carriers you didn't, decided not to pick up. We also have a platform that is called Coverage Builder. This is free to agents appointed with National General specifically, currently rebranded to all states. All federal exchange states are within this platform. And again, all carriers are included in the ACA quoting system. But this platform is going to give you a shopping cart experience. And what that means is by logging in here to complete your ACA enrollment, you're also going to have the capability of quoting additional ancillary plans at the exact same time and building out a more comprehensive portfolio for your customer. You're going to be able to look at hospital indemnity plans, accidents, everything that they have, and go through that process all at one time instead of having to go through two different platforms. And again, it's agent or customer driven. And of course, by going through the system all at one time, it's going to be faster processing times, great commissions for the agents, and supplemental bonuses that are available from the carrier that is offering this system. And then they also have an agent rewards program. Again, has an app, earn points, and you can redeem those for various things. So additional information for the under 65 market and opportunities, there's approximately 40% of Americans that cannot cover a $400 emergency expense. And that is a fairly daunting statistic to, to me. So I would imagine that anyone who cannot cover that $400 emergency expense is likely not going to be able to cover any kind of a high deductible or a high out-of-pocket expense that would be associated with their major medical. So what this means is we really need to be talking about those ancillary additions that can be added. And again, that's going to be accident plans. It's going to be hospital indemnity plans. We have some combination plans available with National General on that coverage builder system that include accident, hospital indemnity, and critical illness. We have um, CI, cancer, heart stroke, and of course there's going to be dental life and additional things like that. But those are going to be your big ones right there. They're going to help cover those out-of-pocket expenses. And of course, you know, if you run into a situation where ACA may not be the best fit, there's always short-term medical insurance that can be considered as an opportunity for that customer. It may be somebody who just recently went to work for a new company and they have 60 to 90 days before they're eligible for coverage. That is a perfect example of someone who is a good fit for short-term medical. There's a lot of opportunity in that market as well. Agents that are selling Medicare to seniors, I'm sure you are regularly coming across those spouses that are under 65 and are not eligible for Medicare. And I know I've spoken with senior agents, they've just let those customers go, they've walked away from it. But the question that I usually have is, did that also affect your senior sale? Did you lose that senior sale because they wanted one agent that could handle both of them at one time? So is that something that has affected you? And selling to customers under 65, keep this in mind, especially a spouse that is close to turning 65, is easily going to give you a self-generated lead for a T65 on your Medicare business. You're literally going to be building out 
your own book of business that is going to help you generate in your own Medicare leads. I also recommend keeping track of the children's birthdays within this system for your under 65 block. And the reason for this is because children age out of their parents' plans at the age of 26. And this creates a special enrollment period no matter what time of year that is. So that easily gives you an opportunity to reach out to that family, review their coverage, and maybe make additional sales on top of trying to make sure that that 26-year-old has medical insurance. We had some interesting market shakeups this year for the 2023 plan year. We had one carrier that was kind of a national carrier that completely exited the market, which has been interesting. Texas also had a major carrier exit their state, their specific state. So they have seen quite the upset there, and we're seeing the sales just all over the place trying to cover the, the people who were losing their coverages from those carriers. So. It's interesting to see how this is going to pan out at the end of the season. Georgia had a major carrier leave the northeast region of their state. And then Florida, just earlier this week, we had a, a carrier that announced that they are not accepting additional 2023 business after the December 13th. So that means that that carrier has pretty much closed up their new business sales. So we're seeing just this interesting shakeup, and we're not really sure what the numbers are going to look like at the end of the season, but we're anxiously awaiting to see how this is all going to add up at the end of the year. So in our underserved and uninsured markets, we see adults in the Hispanic or Latino communities are among some of the highest uninsured at 17.7%. We are also seeing that only about 18% of people who are looking for help with their ACA plans were able to actually find that help. That leaves a large market of people who are still looking for agents every year when they're trying to go through their coverage options. The age range for 19 to 34 is our highest uninsured age range. These, this would include your young adults with family. That's more members per application and most likely a group of people who are going to qualify for higher subsidies. So we should be selling 19 to 34 year olds all day long in the ACA market, but this is one of the highest uninsured groups in the country right now. 26 year olds are the highest specific age of uninsured adults, followed closely by 27 year olds, and then it gets a little bit more mixed up from the ages from there. But 26 year olds, so we kind of take a look at the market because we kept seeing this popping up and hearing about it. You want to move forward for me one more time, Bill? We took a look at the birth rate first. So this is a five-year period, and you'll see that the total male and female birth rate from 1995 to 1999, we're looking at low 3.9 million, pushing up on 4 million people per year that were born. And go ahead and hit the button for me. You're going to see that people who were born in these ages is going to range as far as turning 26 from 20, 2021 to 2025. We're a couple years into this, but the numbers have not changed. The trend has not changed, so I haven't updated the, the birth rate or anything like that. One more time. <clears throat> but what I want to compare this to for you to give you an idea of what this means with 26-year-olds being the highest uninsured age in the country is look at the number of newly eligible enrolled Medicare beneficiaries for the most recent five-year time frame I could get at the time we did this analysis. It's ranging from 3.6 to not quite 3.8 million. Those numbers are slightly lower than the birth rate, which means our 26-year-olds aging out of their parents' policies are creating the same type of enrollment opportunity that 65-year-olds are creating for the Medicare market. This is a huge hidden market that we've been seeing. Hit the button for me, Bill, please. Um, but this should actually give you an idea of where to start looking for opportunities, people who are going to do special enrollment throughout the year at any time and not having to wait for that annual enrollment period to start in the fall. It's absolutely fascinating. One. So if you're interested in the ACA market, I have some snippets for you of where to get started. The first step that you have to do is complete your certification. 
You do have to do this every year, but there is no carrier specific certification. It is just the federal one, which is called federally facilitated marketplace or your state specific, depending on what state you're selling in. And we'll get to that in just a minute. The next step that you're going to take is you're going to need to look at the states and what carriers are available in those states. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more here in a minute. And then you're just going to have to complete your contract request forms to begin the appointment process. These forms are going to provide all the information needed in order to generate your electronic link to start your appointment process. And then you'll also, in addition to that certification, need your health license and your EO. So if you need those items to get started or you have questions about any of these once we get done, I'm going to recommend that you reach out to your marketer to get these items. So the certification. This is going to depend on what state you're selling in. Now you're going to be seeing those light blue states that pretty much cover the, the East Coast and across the middle of the country. These are our federal exchange states. So these ones are using the federally facilitated marketplace, the FFM certification that is available from CMS. One certification is going to give you the certification needed for all of those states. That is free. Your first year is going to take you roughly about two hours and your renewal or your refresher course every year after that should take you about 15 minutes. It's really not difficult. The second thing I want to mention here is the rest of these are state exchanges, which means they have their own state-specific guidelines that you need to be watching. And if you're selling in any of those states, you have to take their specific certification in their specific website. And the time on those can vary by state. I wouldn't even be able to give you a rough estimate. But those are the ones you have to go directly to the state to get that certification. And we do have links to all of those states that we can provide for you as well. It's just all on one page, so we can do that. Next page. In choosing your states and carriers, you're seeing these maps pop up on your screen right now. And the reason I have these in here is I want to point out that when you see that a carrier is available in a state, it doesn't mean that they have product available in the entire state. We also have county approvals that we need to look out for. Now, if you're someone who's selling in the entire state and it really doesn't matter, then you probably don't have to pay as much of attention to these. But if you're someone who's looking to target a specific city or a specific demographic of a state, we really need to kind of drill down in on the availability from these carriers so that we make sure that we're appointing you for the appropriate carriers or you're not going to have product where you need it to be. So it is very important that we take a look at that. Uh, this is just an image of some of the documents and what you can expect to see on them. But once your documents are completed and returned to your marketer, again, you're going to get an electronic link to start that appointment process. And you need to be aware that some of these carriers, their links expire in as little as five days. So you need to be watching for those. And they do have a tendency to hit your spam folders. So be aware that it is extremely important that if you're going to do the appointment, be watching for those links. And then once your appointment is completed, you should be receiving a welcome email either from the carrier and or your marketer letting you know that your appointment has been processed. And then, of course, the final details. Everybody wants to know about compensation. Of course, these carriers are paying commissions, and they are paid on a rate per member per month. A member is a person. So if you have a family, a mom, dad, three children, those are five members that you have on your application, and that commission rate is going to pay you five times. You need to be aware that it is different not only by carrier, but by state. And occasionally, we do see for a year that there is a variance on the age. Occasionally, a carrier will actually pay less for a minor than they will for an adult. But you just have to reference your schedules to verify that. This is an as-earned payout. There are no advances. ACA carriers pay once per month, other than one carrier that we have right now that is paying twice per month. And commission rates for this product market change every single year. So if you have a commission grid that says plan year 2022 on it, you're going to want to get an updated one for 2023. Don't use those to compare to your commission statements that you have for the current plan year. You need to make sure you have current commission schedules. And again, your marketer should be able to provide those for you. 
Carriers occasionally have a per member cap on an application. Usually if we see that at five, but we don't always see it. And you can again, just check your schedule to see if that's something that's going to apply to that specific carrier. Great. And again, you know, the marketer, of course, can always provide those compensation schedules. And I also wanted to mention that during the annual enrollment period that we have every year, which is going on right now, carriers always announce their new per member bonuses. And these can be quite large if you're willing to you know, go after this market and be a big producer and it's per member. And they are typically uncapped, uh, they're tiered. And we see, um, we see agents to get fairly large checks out of this every year. It's gonna be different by state and by carrier. So you're gonna wanna get the schedule for that as well. But it is certainly additional funds that's worth going after. Tessa, I found that absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much for putting that information together for us. And I know that Amy was working in the background to help you with that. We have what is for this series of training an all-time high in the number of questions that are in our queue. We have 36. And so I'm going to I'm going to pull those up and we're going to get through as many of those as we can. Um, it looks like we have a couple of people saying that they were not seeing the slides. Tessa, do you have any issue with us sending out the slides after the fact to people so they can have those in, in hand? I, I do not. I would recommend as a PDF, but I don't have a problem with that. Yep, it looks like a lot of the comments are related to that. So I apologize for that and we'll make sure that that's um, corrected. I will tell you on the YouTube video also, they 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 should be showing as a as a pinned element onto the uh, onto the presentation, um, the federal poverty level uh, Myron points out here changes every year. Tessa, is that something that you provide for your agents? Is, you know, an update on on that is so people can see what percentile their beneficiaries fall in. Yes, we are regularly watching for updated grids on those items. Got it. The um, yeah. All the reason we have so many questions is because apparently while I was advancing the slides, we have a number of people indicating that the slides were not visible. So this will give you an opportunity to take a look at the materials that we will send out shortly after this presentation and also an opportunity for you to check it out on our YouTube channel. And I do uh, I do apologize for that. Um, let's see here. Right. That seems to be the majority of the feedback. Somebody asked what FMO is Tessa with Stevens Matthews is who, who they're with um, in case there's, there's questions about that. Um, and I'll send out her contact information when I send up the follow-up information from this presentation. I do want to apologize for that technical difficulty it seemed that we encountered. Are there any other questions not related to the, the, uh, the problems with presentation that we can answer here in the time we have remaining? All right. Somebody asked the leads for final expense in Medicare are good. Um, the, the, the leads for final expense in Medicare were very good um, during the, 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 the Medicare open enrollment period and also with final expense. Um, talk, to your, talk to your marketing representative about some of the performance reports that we've been sending out on a regular basis, but we've had some people absolutely crush it on our Medicare live transfers upwards of 20% conversion during AEP. Timothy Burke asks, how much are the leads for ACA? Um, the leads for ACA are, um, are uh, $60, and they, as Carol is writing into the chat here, are, 20, are, are $60 for each transfer. Um, how do the campaigns work? Carol, do you want to just talk for a moment about how the campaign, how, you, how Fluent is generating these ACA leads in the marketplace, what process you're going through? Sure. So we have a number of owned and operated sites where we collect TCPA opt-in data. And when that data comes into our call center, we're able to then, of course, pitch the correct campaign, whether it be a consumer who is right for ACA or Medicare or final expense. Um, the agent then qualifies them and we're able to warm transfer them right over to any agent available in the LeadStar platform. So we do a few different qualifications. On the consumer, this way we make sure that whoever we're sending over is qualified for that particular campaign. And then as long as the lead star agent is um, has the money in the account and they're turned on, 
and the geo is correct, you will get a warm transfer from Fluent. Uh, thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Um, reminder form 1095A in January. Tessa, does that ring any bells for you in terms of uh, what Myron is speaking about? And you're on mute. What, is that? what was that form again? Uh, I just there's just a note in the chat that says reminder form 1095-A in January. That's not something I'm personally familiar with. No, I would have to get back with you on that one. That's not. Yep, that totally understand. To so, Christian, the 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 question you're asking about sixty dollar leads with a twenty percent close rate. So in some of the large call centers that are taking these leads right now, they're reporting a $150 cost of acquisition um, as, as the median for, for these leads. And so I don't have my calculator handy, but that would imply an, an even higher close rate on, on, on those leads. Um, right yeah. now, during this period of time, and Carol, can you, can you confirm mm -hmm. that? These leads sure, are yeah. ACA um, well. has a very high converting um, campaign for a lot of our buyers. Uh, we see anywhere from 45 to 55 percent, depending on whoever's buying that transfer, um, converting to a policy. So um, it's a very high converting qualified transfer that you'll be getting from us. And truly consistent. It's one of our most consistent campaigns when it comes to conversion rates. Will there, the Amy asks, will there be online leads at some point? Only at yeah. a point where we find, yes, there will be, mm -hmm. but only at the point where we refine those campaigns such that we know that they're going to be cost-effective on a CPA basis, as mm -hmm. cost-effective as the calls are. So that's one of the things that Lead Star Marketplace does um, at, as a foundational rule, which is we don't launch campaigns until such time as we have confidence in those campaigns. And we feel like uh, we, we're, we're close, but we're not quite there yet. So right now we're just going with the calls. But when we do feel like the, the data leads are there, and we'll give you uh, a positive economic impact. We will we will add those in. Are they ex are the leads exclusive or are they resold after some period of time? As these are calls, um, there's a certain exclusivity built into them. But each and every data lead, when they're available, going through Lead Star Marketplace is exclusively yours. I know that some agents will report that people will say, "Well, I just got contacted by," and that's not because that lead that came into Lead Star was resold. It's because that particular person filled out multiple forms, and so they went to multiple endpoints that were activated against. But absolutely, it is the case that leads that come into Lead Star Marketplace on a data basis are exclusively yours to get into the weeds for a period of 21 days until such time they are sold one additional time after that 21 days of exclusivity in our age leads marketplace. After that, they're they're not resold any further. Um, is, we also see that there is also a Spanish um, question around Spanish yes, and those, those will um, soon be available as well on the platform we're working yes, with. Another question about real-time data leads. I don't see in the leads in LeadStar, when will they be active? Ricardo, the leads are under calls. So you're going to want to choose calls as your first campaign option. And then you'll, um, from there, you'll be able to choose the uh, ACA as an option. There should be uh, Medicare, Life, and then ACA. Right. Well, I want to apologize again for uh, missing the technical difficulty that, that we weren't able to, to share the presentation in real time. Um, but I would encourage you to you know, take a look at it as soon as it crosses your plate. I'll get this loaded up to YouTube just as soon as possible. It should be later tonight, um, at latest sometime this weekend. And we can uh, make sure that, that everyone has access to that. In addition, I'll send out to those people who joined the webinar um, the, the presentation that Tessa so, and Amy so kindly put together for us. All right, so that's all the questions we have. Um, if you have a question that you didn't ask, you think of one after the session, please send it to us at leadstar at leadstarhub.com. The address is, is down there at the bottom of my image. I wanna thank our panelists for joining us today as, as well as extending a special thanks to our audience and all the agents who are using Leadstar Marketplace. We've learned a lot over these past four months and most importantly, you've used LeadStar Marketplace to sell a lot. I hope each of you has a chance to spend time with your loved ones this holiday season, reflecting on a great year 
and we will see you back here in 2023, rested and ready for another great year together. Thank you.